if there was any possible way to lose salvation, I would lose it. If it was possible to disqualify myself from salvation, I would get disqualified. I can't save myself and I can't keep myself saved. I can't be righteous enough to save myself, and neither can you, and I can't be righteous enough to keep myself saved. God's going to have to save me by grace. He's going to have to keep me by grace. He's going to have to save me by His power, power of the Holy Spirit, regeneration. He's going to have to keep me by His power, the Holy Spirit's power of protection to the end. And that's the promise of God. We are headed for glory, dear ones, and what that means is we will be like the perfect man, Jesus Christ. First John 3, 2, we'll be like Him when we see Him as He is. We'll have a body like unto the body of His glory, Philippians 3, 20 and 21. We have been chosen before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before Him. And nobody gets lost in the process. John 6 says, all the Father gives to Me will come to Me and I lose none of them. I lose none of them, but will raise them all at the last day by the power of the Holy Spirit, as Romans 8, 11 says. It's the Spirit who raised Christ from the dead who will also raise us from the dead. So what is the point of salvation? It is that we might be brought into the presence of God to stand before Him and see the fullness of His glory blazing from His throne in the new Jerusalem, in the center of the new heaven and the new earth, and be with Him forever. Be with Him forever. When man comes into the world, he has no glory. We come short of the glory of God. As Paul says in Romans, we fall way short of the glory of God. We can't attain to that. Uh, we have no glory. It is a very, very faded mark, that image of God, which we bear from our original creation. It has been terribly scarred and marred. But in Christ, we can have glory. In Christ, we can become glorious. In Christ, we literally share the very glory of God. In the Old Testament, God said, My glory will I not share with another. Not another idol, not another false god, but He will share His glory with His people. We live, Paul says, in the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We're not glorious yet in the full sense, although we have tasted of that glory. That glory has come into us, the Spirit lives in us. That glory is not yet manifest. That's why Romans 8 that I read earlier says that the whole world hasn't seen the glorious manifestation of the children of God. We're veiled right now. We're, we're veiled. We're covered. They can look at us walking down the street and they don't see any glory. But one day we will be fully glorified and we will be like Christ. That is the goal of salvation. As I pointed out at the end of verse 30, the ones that He predestined will be the ones that He will glorify. So the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in us to keep us secure all the way through the sanctifying process to glory. He is the seal, the guarantee, the engagement ring, the down payment, the first fruits of our coming glory. And this is all based on the fact that we have been made sons, so that the glory which will be ours one day is given to us as an inheritance from our Father. We have been adopted into the family of God. We have been born into the family of God. We're sons both ways, and we are sons in order that we may receive glory. We are the children of God with full rights to share all that God possesses. It's a magnificent reality. 